wrap. All right, and we're back. We're back. Episode two. Episode two. I'm excited. (laughs) So, well, first off, episode one was actually did a lot better than I thought. Sixty six downloads. Survived. Quite a few views with the on 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 the YouTube. On the YouTube. And SoundCloud, I think maybe over a hundred listens, yeah. possibly around there. So that was good. That's so good, good amount. to our viewers tuning in now for episode two, thanks for that. That was a good to jump our viewers start. Viewers tuning in, that's not enough, honestly. Like, <laughs> come on, you got to stay hungry, right? Yeah, you, that's you, you can't lie down there. One hundred thousand, <laughs> not enough. I will do it. So for this one, we got some actual structured topics, which would be nice. So we're going to just jump right into it right now, Mm -hmm. keeping with our theme of this podcast. We're going to share some personal stories about our first entrepreneurial experience. So why don't we dive into that? Whoever wants to go first, shan't we? You know what? I'm going to go first. Yeah, dive in. Cool, Peter. Let's hear it. Mine is... Hopefully more boring than you guys. I'm going to go first, and then you guys can ramp up the intensity from here. Sounds um, good. It can only go up. It can only go up. Uh, I used to teach piano, and I so I had a little business where I taught piano to other people. And then there were a bunch of other piano teachers who were also my age. And so we all taught piano together, and then we would throw like recitals together and that sort of stuff. Hmm. And that is not a startup, but that's the closest thing I have. And to you were that. making well, bank, like, <clears throat> independent project. I mean, and, and obviously you made some money. Was there some profit? Some it was. It was nice. Yeah. Collected. How much do you remember? Kind of how much you were making? Um, I believe it was like twenty five an hour. Nice. For, oh wow. For lessons, yeah, and then you that's get a few people coming every week. That's and, a. And for, how old were you? I. I think I was in high school. That was just all oh, through high school. Well, that's a good, that's still a good gig. I mean, oh, yeah. And you obviously you kind of make your own hours and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, you decide everything. You're your own boss, which I guess has its downsides too. <clears throat> yeah, I you guess. Stay committed and all that. I feel like, um, if anything, though, it's still a lot better than most people's first jobs that they get out of high school, right? Working at, you know, fast food or restaurants or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, and even just the amount of hours you put into what you get out. Mm-hmm, that's true. That's true. All right, that's pretty good. Now, Tolu, you do something similar to that, right? Yes, sir. The piano gig. And what I like about the whole self as, you know, being your own boss is great and all, but you definitely have to learn how to be self-disciplined and that, you know, if I wake up late, I can easily just cancel the classes, especially if I don't need the, uh, the money. But you need to be self-disciplined and, you know, respect the students and their time as much as you would like them to respect to respect yours. Because when I started out, I know I had people who lived ridiculously far. Mm-hmm. That was just this past summer who would be there, you know, busing the mom with two <laughs> little kids being there on time. And then I had people who lived literally right next to you know, the place who would show up late, like, oh. like an hour late. I remember, oh, do you I remember mean the students? One, yeah, the students. Mm-hmm. I remember once lesson was for, <clears throat> was for, for 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. I called and said, you know, where are you guys, blah, blah, blah. They're like, oh, I apologize <laughs> again. We'll be on our way. We did it till 11. Didn't come. 11.30, I got pissed and I left. Well, yeah. And then uh-huh. they called me at, 12 being like you know we're here we can't see you why aren't you here and i was just like like i i i, I couldn't even talk i was just so mad and in the same way i expect people to respect my time i also kind of had to learn to respect to respect other p people's time and that goes the opposite too. I I knew I know slash knew quite a few piano teachers, mm-hmm. and there were some ones who were just not good. Like they'd have kids who can't wait to play music. They show up, they're unpacking their things. They've got like their guitar or their piano or whatever out, and the music teacher doesn't show. And you have to, if you're a parent, you have to explain to this kid, yeah, hey, you got to put all that stuff back in. We're going home. Tommy's a little busy. Nothing's <laughs> happening. Tommy's gone. Like. <laughs> Tommy's not coming. I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's I mean like right now I how I got into this whole, you know, sound thing and music thing, making beats and whatnot was with 
my best friend back in BC, Moses, we, when I came to Canada, the church I was going didn't have, you know, any constant piano player oh, or, or instrumentalist. Right. And our, both our parents are pastors. So when we, when they'll show up early at church, we would have like two hours to spare. So we just decided we'll just put on Hillsong songs, rock songs, whatever it is. And I, I would play piano, whatever to it. He'll play drums. We taught each other, you know, other instruments and, and whatnot. And, you know, that was a situation where obviously we were just a bunch of, of kids that had this passion. And luckily we had an avenue to, you know, build on it. Mm -hmm. But in a situation I can't imagine where, you know, we're trying to improve on this. We're trying to get better. And there are adults that should know better who are discouraging that. And like Peter said, not respecting your time. Uh -huh. now. All right. So what about you guys? Do you got it? You got any Starbucks? <laughs> Do you have one? Um, I mean, it's not so much as like, a, like, a experience I, i'm using startup like very loosely yeah, this is a very we we're all yeah. here for you angus like by the way well. how old were you when you started doing piano just to uh, get a when those came here 2007 so i'll say 11 oh, okay so fairly young 11 was kind of when myself and moses nice. started you know, playing around on you instruments You acquired those stuff. magical fingers. You well, it took time. Solo but, always yeah. had the fingers. So, <laughs> you just couldn't use them, yeah. Took a lot of humbling, you know, but yeah, around that awesome. time. All right, Angus, let's hear it. Well, uh, I don't really know. Um, last last summer, actually, I was working for the government for uh, doing bees, bee work. I was a bee technologist. Bee work. Yeah, I don't <laughs> Busy bees, you know, <laughs> uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword, I would say. You, uh, there was the times of getting stung in your face. Tell us and, about those times. God damn. <laughs> like, it was a tally board. And, um, How many times did you get stung? Uh, I think around like 28 by oh. the end. <laughs> but I mean, some, some, of the, some of the people working there, they, they were in like 80, 90 stings mm. and like apparently just each one is different every single time so like, <laughs> and how do you get to that point in life where you can distinguish between every bee sting you get like each one yeah, has a personality no, no bueno no bueno at all. every just, single one's different eh uh, how to just pull the tobo yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just take off the suit and just let them have at her. just run well oh, after man. they sting that when the first one sting stings you it releases some pheromones just that just like tell like it's just like a basically a big marker on your back saying i'm right here oh and they all just no. come at you full force and it's you gotta run so, see like don't you have the protection on though you have like those a are chain uh, mail, you're supposed to wear so white like... colors apparently because they don't like black and um i figured that out real quick they don't like black colors well, uh, i don't know why why that like, is but, they um, just find it aggressive. Maybe because yeah. black bears, because black bears eat honey. Maybe they're, that's kind of an instinct. Bees are. Could be, could be, could be, could be completely wrong. You might want to look I'll that look up. Right now, yeah. Yeah. yeah but, I have yeah. no idea. Anyways, so back to the business side of this. Um, there was a technologist technology department, and they were they kind of run um, all the data and stuff for that for the gov uh, the government and the bees and the plants and etc. But um. One of the guys found out that I was in computer science and he wanted me to help him with his like job work. And um, he needed to like pull out some uh, data from a PDF file onto an Excel spreadsheet. And he wanted to know if like we could like if I could program something that could do that for him. And like I said, like, yeah, like sure, like uh, give me like a weekend or something. And I um, I got actually scared because I didn't want him to put his name on it. <laughs> so I coded it like in jargon, like with like pizza and ice cream <laughs> as like variables, and like just to make it safe that like he had no idea what the hell was going on in my code. So, but uh, he never actually uh, took it though. But that was like my first entrepreneurial entrepreneurial ex there you experience. Go. Yeah. Nice. Experience. All right, we got nice. one more. I didn't know you did that. The uh, I thought they just asked you about that B app. Oh, no, they did a B app, and I was kind of interested in that because oh. it apparently didn't go well. But Oh, really? oh yeah. that's right. They wanted you to maybe see. I wonder what was wrong. They, I guess apparently just 
uh, it happens a lot. They put in a lot of money for this amazing app, and then the um, you don't communicate well with the programmers, and you don't right. really understand that you have to tell them specifically what you want, or you could get a like bad product, basically. I feel like that's. <clears throat> I mean, we learn a lot about like a lot of communication between you and your client when developing. And for sure, that's not their fault at all. If anything, that's the fault of, of the, the developer, of the developer, not because we're, we're taught to make sure you ask every single question so you don't assume anything. Yeah, but that at the end of the day, like if they're not, if they're not coming to you, like it's their problem, you know. Are you, aren't you develop, developers supposed to go to them though? Uh, some some software practices like teach that, but I don't know if the one that they oh. had. I mean, if that. you're going to them and they're giving you bad answers or vague, then then yes, it's in the fault of the client. Yeah, I guess it's I both ways. All right, so entrepreneurship. <clears throat> mine, mine was I think I was grade four or five, and I was doing a book report. <clears throat> on um I think it was Lord of the Rings Return of the King. So in grade four. <laughs> yeah. Or four or five. He's what a nerd. Like ab- <laughs> absolutely. <on>. All right. <laughs> I all think right, it was uh on. yeah, like late it I wasn't quite be. grade six. I think it was great. I wanna say maybe it was four or five, somewhere in there. Anyway. So I'm doing a book report and you have to uh draw a uh what's it called a cover page picture or whatever for your book book report i have no idea where this is going so (laughs) i had to you'll see you'll see (laughs) so i'm drawing this thing and the cover is these towers um from from the movies because uh (laughs) it was one of the towers of the twin towers the one in mordor uh yeah the sauron one and so i'm drawing this tower trying to at least um because the this book version was after the movies were released so it was a picture from the movie so i'm trying to draw this like super complex tower by looking at it <clears throat> and my and my dad comes in and he's just looking at what i'm drawing i'm at my desk in my room and there's this kind of figure and he goes oh what what is that and it's supposed to be one of the spires mm-hmm. and i'm like what are, what are you talking about and he's like that right there that person i'm like i don't know what you're talking about so he goes and draws up a piece of paper and he's like this right here. So he circles it and then he draws it and it's like, it looks like a spiky headed cartoon character mm-hmm. with like just a flat lined mouth that goes slightly outside of his head and then like these shades on. Okay. And it looked kind of like a neat little cartoon character. And I was like, uh, oh, that's kind of cool. And he's like, yeah. So we ended up turning that into a small clothing line called Dude. Wait, what? sorry, rewind. <laughs> Hold on. He can't say we had a sketch and, and we just turned it into a clothing line. <laughs> so what me for orcs. And, so for orcs only. <laughs> so what we did is we took this character, we just called it dude, gave it its own like neat little font. I could uh-huh. actually um I don't know Pull if I still have so we made hats. Okay. And some toques. And we went to this place Go Logo Wear in the Edmonton and we made these hats. And these toques, um, and I was selling them at my school for like 25 bucks because you could you only like... produce them in batches of a dozen or so. So, you know, we had to sell them at a certain price so we'd make profit and, and be able to uh, order a new batch. So we made one batch of hats, and the hats didn't turn out nice at all. Like they were really <laughs> shit quality. So I was really, that really like, Bumped really hit. Yeah, it really bummed me out. Like yeah. I was pretty upset. Like, and they didn't look nice. So, like, not a lot of people. Like wanted to buy them because they didn't look like the mm-hmm. quality. It wasn't anything with the design. It was just quality of the hat. But the toque's really nice. Was it that you got the hats from not like not a great place or? Um. Yeah. I don't know. Like I don't know a lot of um custom like places you print your own kind of batches of clothing. Mm-hmm. Like that was the only one we knew of. Mm-hmm. Um. So we just naturally, you know, we just went there. I'm. Sh- I think there's lots of uh online places now to do that how many weeks or days or like how much time do you think you guys put into researching well we so we lived in st albert so whenever we went down to the north side it was Mm -hmm. like right on 
Oh, what was the road? It was right on St. Albert Trail. So mm-hmm. we passed it constantly. Oh, okay. So we knew it was there right away. So we didn't have to go looking at okay. all. We're like, oh, let's just go there and we can do it there. Um, so so the hats didn't turn out so well. Uh, but the toques were nice. And a couple, bunch of my friends bought them. And my dad was going to like put up flyers around Edmonton mm-hmm. that just had the character and said, dude, on it question mark just to gain people's interest you know yeah. try and get into skate shops because i was into skateboarding i skateboarded for like i don't know like 10 years or something like that All so right. nice. so the important know. question how much money did you make <laughs> i don't really remember but we sold 25 bucks a hat and then we made a, one batch of hats one batch of toques and then that was it and it kind of my interest kind of faded but that was my first entrepreneurial experience how old were you um I would have been so younger than thirteen. Toques are uh, hats, by the way, to my American listeners. Yeah, <laughs> ten or maybe ten. Ten, and you were making at least a few hundred dollars, which to a ten-year-old we sold. Is... We, we sold. We sold some for sure. Hundred percent. It wasn't a sweatshop. If you're ten <laughs> years old and you have like more than twenty dollars. That's like you're set for life. Yeah. What are you All I'm ever saying is like, you were yeah. definitely the plug for Halloween. <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, I, I forgot about that. You know, that was my first experience. And then I think I did a, a few more after. I've always been trying to like, I didn't do one for a, a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but now that I think about it now, like I've had quite a few project like <clears throat> things I've tried to start. It's kind of, I feel like. I just like doing that. It's exciting. This is actually nice because I've been thinking of, you know, <clears throat> what it's like to have a a clothing type of uh, mm-hmm. type line. Of, of, yeah, line or the the process, how much profit you're, you're really may, making, how much research and stuff. And obviously, again, m- one of the reasons I asked how do you wear is because it's a lot different now with the, the internet. Yeah. Obviously. Because I have a couple of friends, I don't know if I should drop uh, drop names here, but I have a couple of friends who who do have clothing lines in BC. Really? And uh, actually, yeah, I'll just say it. One of them is the Black and White Collection mm-hmm. uh, by uh, Seth Sorensen. And it's more, you know, outlandish, like Kanye West type. Oh, like artistic trendy type yeah. stuff yeah exactly the black and white collection <laughs> by black and white by seth Sorensen. seth Sorensen, that's such a good like clothing name <laughs> i do like it it sounds yeah. nice like i'll pull it up right now and then the other one is a little bit more you know <clears throat> nature and and mm-hmm. earthy and you'll see me wear uh wearing it sometimes that's the uh, jaunt clothes clothing and yes. things like that and i've actually been been meaning to talk to them about kind of the uh, process so yeah tell me i don't know just like like f- let, let's say i wanted to get into it or people sure listening wanted to get into it mm-hmm. obviously you're 10 let's yeah. but let's raise the i do here. have uh sorry go ahead let's raise the stakes here we're all starting a clothing company okay right now what do we do well first just off some people i know because i have a, a friend of mine that i played football with that has started his, his own And first off, you need a basic concept. And I think kind of like most companies, you need to find out your identity. So like the style. Yeah. And it's usually nice once you have a basic concept, um, you have kind of identity. um, That way, you know, okay, what's our target audience? So that's another thing you have to look at and really hone in on who you're targeting. I feel like we should target just the rich people of the world. <laughs> the like people Instagramming like piles of money, that sort of Yeah. Well cause... then I mean they expect a certain amount of quality. Yeah. Do they? <laughs> Possibly. Depends. I mean, if you're talking those Instagram rich famous people, I mean they they wear clothes that we that we kind of, or they wear like the Armani they wear the same style, but they wear, you know, the Armani, the Hugo Boss, like yeah. those T shirts look like the T shirts we wear. But it's just the name. Um, yeah. Kind of like you're kind of pulling up. Oh, this is the black and white collection yeah, you're talking the, about. Oh, they have a little store. Black and white. The, the yeah. BW collection. I like that. As you oh, can see, a couple pink shirts. Some of the, nice. okay. the stuff. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah. 
I like that hoodie. Pretty high. It's like a camouflage cream. and it has their creams. their uh, name cream. on the back. But yeah. that's what you start out with. Like very simple, really brand everything with your logo or your name so people when they wear it, they know. It's almost like your first clothing line, your first collection mm-hmm. has to be almost advertising. Just brand awareness. That brand awareness. Yeah. Absolutely, right? If we can get Kanye West to wear just one of our shirts. <laughs> Like, that's it, right? Bless. That's the thing. And I think once you go, then it's just designs. I mean, I feel like it doesn't take too much for the first couple collections. As you saw, like, those are pretty simple designs. Mm -hmm. But after a while, once people know, once people know your brand, then you can, then you kind of have to get artistic with it. And that gets tricky because you can't just order from these standard places to just get a couple dozen of a regular t-shirt you know like the designs kind of get a little uh more probably expensive i mean i don't know or they just can't do it at all yeah right and you have to go to a better place but uh yeah oh same would you put that under like production in terms of uh what part would be under production the branding of your company because I, I think of more production, like how how you're gonna like how much you're selling, how are you fabricating it? Right. Uh, there's also like advertisement. Yeah. And stuff like that. I guess advertisement would come in once you and then have business your, management. Yeah. Once you have your target audience, you know where you want to advertise, what stores you want to get your stuff into to being sold. I mean, obviously, most people just do online stores now. Just skip the middleman. Mm-hmm. Um, that's way better. Um, I know there's a couple different um, selling strategies that people do when it's on uh, when it's online. It's either you house your own inventory and you ship it, or you have your manufacturer ship it straight to there. They have different uh, specific names. Um, or it's like you try to go commercial and then you sell to like Canadian Tire, Walmart, etc. But... Yeah. All right, so clothing company succeeds. You make a ton of money. How do you know you've made it? Where do you stop? What is what is success for you? That's or true. Or just in life, where what do you? How do you know where to stop? What's your version of success? Yeah. Do you know what it is? Well, I don't know. I, this this may be a pretty high a uh, high up plot place to start off, but crack it with for me. It's like we only go down from here. <laughs> For me, I would say success is definitely a place, for me personally, I define success as a place where my money is working for me, as opposed to, you know, the other way around. And that gives me time to be able to be comfortable and do what I love. Yeah. And for some people, there's definitely the issue also of, you know, you should do you should want to do what you love like at all times and like i was talk 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 i was talking to peter about earlier today that i can't, I, can't, I wish i could remember who it was but he asked the question about if you're let's say you're 24 and you have the the option of doing what you love for let's say you know free or 15 dollars an hour or you have the option of you know picking up uh, let's say just cows. Bees. You can pick up bees. Yeah, picking up bees, just like <laughs> some terrible waste job or whatever it is for, you know, 30 an hour. Mm-hmm. Which one would you pick? Yeah, I guess. Wait, oh no, hold up. Say say what you say. Like, what Why? What would you pick? Yeah, so I I would pick the the crap job because I would be making more more money which i believe will be an investment to be able to you know to get to a place where to your future basically yeah exactly to my future and then being comfortable enough to do what i love because you know success yes it's i I think doing what what you love does bring happiness for sure but there's definitely the other side of being able to pro to provide for yourself and your family and i feel like that's kind of where the for me anyway success ties into that for me so if you had to 
put it in kind of a formal definition for yourself? Formal definition of success would be getting to a place where my money worked for me. Okay. That's pretty good. It's well thought out is what yeah. that is. But I also think there's the another side to where you could say that you need to work to a place where you can have your money work for you. Like mm -hmm. starting off as a young, young entrepreneur, you you do the shit jobs, you do the shit work because you don't you, you need to know what shit work is so you don't have to do it for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. I think that's why he was saying he he would pick the B jobs. Yeah. Right. The, the, but not like the, forever. I would say you do that because you need money for school or yes, whatever exactly. say you. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I believe that when when I can graduate college and be on my way and find a job, it might not make me uh, happy. Like uh, people always say that you want to uh, the best job would be a job where you never had to work a day in your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. I, I feel like there are professions out there for people like that, but there are also professions that you go to school for, you you become great at because you put hard work in, and you receive a reward that lets you live life happy. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know. Absolutely. That's true. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so you, what would your formal definition of success be for you? Formal, would, mathematically rigorous. Well, after getting to a point of where I could achieve success, because I would say that I'm not there. I can't achieve success in, on a greater level right now. But yeah. I'm on my way. The, the definition would be to have a have an outlet, have a reward from the job that you get later down in life that, that you, makes you happy. Nice. Mr. Nice. I think I would say... <clears throat> For sure, you want to be doing something, like you guys all make good points, you want to be doing something that makes you happy, that you can do every day, that almost necessarily doesn't feel like a job, um, which is all very, very valid. Um, and I would agree with that. And I think that a proper career choice or career field for yourself, especially kind of aligning with what you take in university, you know, if you pick the right subject or degree, let's just say. Well, you don't even also have to go to university. But. Yeah, but uh, I'm just trying to like relate it to that just because that's where we are. Yeah. I mean, naturally, you know, we're in computer science. When I graduate, hopefully I get a job in computer science. So naturally, I'm already going to be pretty happy doing something that I'm interested in. Yeah. Whatever it is. And so the other half I would talk about is financial stability where I don't have to worry about money. I don't have to worry about paying bills. Yeah. I mean, I can give back to whomever or whatever organization I want to. It doesn't matter. And being able to provide for yourself, not even like just really not survive, but really like live. Be able to go on trips and not worrying about budgeting. You know, like money yeah. is almost no option, uh, no object. Like the, you don't you don't have to worry about a thing. Like you're set, you're okay. And also, a, in rather than um, or getting away from financials, the financial aspect of it, um, I find being in a job where you're always working on the next step. Yeah. And it's not just a repetitive task of day to day. It's always you're always working on something and something new is coming out and you're excited. And I think that is why I kind of like the entrepreneurial aspect, especially if you have a high role in the company or the startup or whatever it is, because you're involved in the process of like making that next step and figuring out what you guys are going to do. Um, I think maybe that's the draw for myself um, for the entrepreneurial. Okay. So maybe a formal definition would be being financially secure on all bases, being safe on all bases financially and working in a job that engages you and keeps you excited. All right. I, full disclosure, did not prepare an articulate <laughs> and like very well thought out idea. A thesis. I just kind of off the you dome. You spoke that from one. the heart. Yeah, right? absolutely. I speak from the bank account. <laughs> I like this guy. My, my, I feel like my version of success is 
like car commercials, you know? Like you've got the SUV and it's driving through like a forest somewhere and there's like deer jumping over it. Yeah. And like, you know, it's in the desert now. And and then it's like pulling and there's EDM up. EDM music going. Yeah, you know. Like, and then you've got the soft lighting and you're yeah. speeding down a beach and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Like people who just, because nobody actually does that. Nobody, unless you've actually made it. Or or penthouse, I could I could go for one of those. That wacky, crazy yeah, I definitely people. want to be like really really up there in like financials. Yeah. Like definitely, I mean, my personal goal is I want to make a million or at least have a net worth of a million before I turn thirty. I just I'm the thing I I am or the way I am with money is that you know if I make a thousand dollars, I'm like okay. Hey, my bank account's never going below a thousand dollars. Yeah. And as soon as I make five and ten, I, I always kind of just want to be like, "Hey, you've hit this milestone. Now it's time to hit another one." And that's just talking in terms of money, but I mean, it's easy because it's a number and you can see them. It's, very, it's a measure. linear progress progression of. Yeah. How about the issue money. of you know? Yes, ideally, once you make a thousand, bank account never goes under a thousand, and so on progressively, but. Kind of the more money you make, the more I feel like, you know, the more you kind of have to let go of to invest, if that makes sense, where yeah, that's true. you're investing a hundred to make a thousand, you're not going to invest a hundred to make a thousand. You're going to have to invest, you know, but you don't have to. Unless you're a good you gambler. Would, you would like you gotta to. you got to spend money to make money. Exactly. You can gamble. Exactly. Well, that's the thing. And that perspective is coming from someone who's never had to invest anything (laughs) so that's just how i view it but once you're if you're talking about to someone who is you know a venture capitalist Mm -hmm. they understand that the value of you know don't worry if your bank account dips below this number again because you're investing it to make more money yeah and i'll say like like you accurately brought up that's definitely important to get help i think and it's hard because you know it's hard to trust someone with something you work hard on like if we if this you know becomes a a thing and it becomes big it'll be hard for us to trust other people with it because you know we put a lot of time when no one asked us to into this and the same way with starting up your own business from scratch so right this being the this being bee clothing the... company we're all starting together <laughs> this week oh, yeah, we're still and and or hats. the podcast too you know Coming soon. <laughs> some crazy new. Yeah. Hey, but, that's a t-shirt idea. That's some like revenue for us. B shirt. Well, let's not say it on the air. So. Oh. <laughs> oh why not? All right. So I want you to open jacked. the podcast.com slash shop, and you're gonna see five t-shirts on there, <laughs> each a different color, each a different B. I feel like we definitely already have some nice insiders or concepts that we can go off if yeah, we wanted to yeah. start In the merchandise. Cities. I mean, our hosted uh, website, podcast.com, does mm-hmm. have a merchandise sales analysis track, so they yes. must have some kind of functionality yes. yeah. to incorporate in mm-hmm. there. It is so important to stay connected. Like, mm-hmm. even with this, for example, you know, I feel like between just the, the four of us, we know people who you know make apps like us ourselves have yeah. clothing lines have made startups i've done this and this and that and yeah i find it's hard to go through life being a lone wolf connections and networking is definitely a big part of kind of making it out into the real world mm-hmm. absolutely all right so people who are listening to us right now all eight of you <laughs> <laughs> i want you to open up your email and type in the startups podcast at gmail.com at and gmail. i want you to tell us whose version of success was better <laughs> was it the follow your heart like <laughs> that sort of stuff yeah. or was it the financial like suits like you got oh, you're on the <laughs> high rise nasty suit collection yeah harvest oh. vector you know the things where you open your drawer and the watches are like spinning around oh like, no <laughs> I have a watch fetish. You got like eight or nine cars just like where you, you know, where they rise out of the stage, but that's just how you get to work. Like, I feel like I was the happy medium 
with both. Yeah. But now that he's talking about this, like, oh, I want that too. Oh, I want all that. right, how about we go around the circle here and just and sing Kumbaya, <laughs> my lord. Because we like going around circles. This is so sick. Angus, okay, for the love of Christ. <laughs> We go around a circle and Continue. we talk about our ideal, well, not ideal, but if we, you know, drop the the humble act for a second, mm-hmm. Peter already kind of did, but... That is my humble <laughs> act. <laughs> but what your crazy, you know, I wish, well, even if it was from when you were younger. You mean I want, like I'm still trying to get I it. wish, I, I want, I need, whatever okay. it is, but the biggest one, because for me, it was when I pictured, you know, success when I was younger. It was, you know, big house. But for me personally, I wanted it to all be on the ground. I think because the concept of... This is going to sound very fob and feel free to make your... What your, do you mean on the ground? Your n- underground. Safer. Oh, underground. Oh, underground. Oh, underground. Okay. Oh, okay. Not, okay. Not, not on the ground. On the ground. And this is going to sound fob, but, you know, in Nigeria, we don't have basements. So when I came here, I loved the concept of... And then I think I also saw... I think Bill Gates' house or something. Oh, yeah. His and is, most of it is also, of it is yeah, a lot of it is on the ground. So I kind of, you know, liked the concept of having like kind of most of my house on the ground. And then overground is just garages and basketball courts, tennis courts and right. whatnot. And, but then it's, you know, sunlight is also a big thing, which unless you have a open, open roof, it's kind of a, uh, if you're rich a, enough, a, that's not a, a problem. Boom. You just like, yeah, I guess, you know, you, it, it, you got the right. mirrors <laughs> set up just right. Yeah. yeah totally exactly. doesn't need a tan. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Yeah. So, so yours is like some crazy underground fortress house. Yeah. Crazy sci-fi, you know, like yeah. I definitely, this one is still with me. I don't know how real it is in the real world, but I definitely want in my office to have, one book I take out of my shelf <gasps> as a secret room. room. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving me so many ideas. Yeah, no, Tolu just made me drop every single thing I had. And now I'm thinking like bomb shelters. I'm thinking like a little panic room off to the side, like a small palace, but it's just all like waterfalls. and. Yeah, 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 definitely. I don't know where that last one came <laughs> Definitely. Angus, what's your crazy... Angus Man, sauce. let's not go around the circle. Let's hit the diagonal over to best or... I'll hit it. I have All no right. idea. What... So for me, it was in the house <clears throat> because I've seen people just have way too much house to themselves. And I only really want at least, at the very most, three kids max. So I'm trying to buy a house that's big enough for me, a wife, three kids, and that's it. And your roommate, Peter. Yes. <laughs> And I, but also roomy, like spacious, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, like this house that we're in right now, like this would be good, big enough for three, for three people, minus the indoor pool. Yes, it would. Because that's an indoor pool in this house. Because that's too, because I feel like I wouldn't, like we wouldn't use, I'd rather take out that, that pool and put like a complete indoor gym in there. Like that'd be my idea. But this size house, in the gym. But not too big. Like, I'd like it's to point big. out that there's already put... an indoor gym in this house. I could put oh, my yeah. house in this house. I forgot. Okay, we'll take the pull out and put a squash court. I'd be down okay. with that. All right, all right, that's that's acceptable. Still, but not like the thing is, you look at this house, you're like, hey, it's big. But I'm talking like the people, like tech executives, and you mm-hmm. look at their houses, they make this look like a hut. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like something that's nice and big, but not like outlandish. Yeah, yeah. So. So for me, it's not the house. It's not really the cars. I just want one car for myself, maybe one car for the spouse, and then like a fan, like a nice SUV. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for me, it's all about like the wardrobe and the small perks of having money. Mm. I wear only super nice suits. <laughs> I got that nice rotating watch case that Ooh, comes yeah, out yeah, yeah. and Psycho. i do not <laughs> fly <laughs> coach or first class only private charter <laughs> that's, like that that's what Psycho. that's what i want i want that kind of money where like i don't have to deal with the general public i can just pay my way like the special treatments you know see i should have gone first because i'm constantly changing them up i just somebody light my way 
<laughs> someone be my beacon so I know what to spend my money on. Do you have one now, Angus? Do you know? I mean, I want a yacht. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. To the point. I don't like boats. <laughs> After Jack, Jack took Jack took me down to uh, California and we went on his uh, buddy's yacht and sold me. Gotta have yeah. a yacht. Really? Can I come on your yacht? Can we hang out? Yeah, dude, we can hang out. Let's <laughs> awesome. record a There's podcast on that yacht. yacht. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Ooh, Coming to you so, live from the international waters. Airwaves Ooh. on the waterwaves. We got to stay in the whole time, though, because I can't swim, so I won't be messing around on the docks and stuff. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't like boats. I don't like the water. <laughs> so. Rock the boat. But I mean, you you're know. Too, you're too jacks to float? <laughs> I... I can swim. You can bob. Yeah, it's not very confident about your it's, ocean. Uh, it's. I'm trying to formulate why. It's because I don't like. I, I have a fear of the ocean because I don't like how I can't see what's in it. Oh, it's yeah. It just freaks me out. Yeah, it's the whole. It's lot, like I don't know what's water. down there. Talk about infinity. You talk about things you don't know. Yeah, I just yeah. like I don't. I don't mess with Craziness. water. There's things we're just we're not meant to be in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've I've definitely never had that fear before. I I don't understand it. Yeah, but <laughs> I haven't been on a yacht either, so. Maybe I'm I'm lacking in perspective. I think I would enjoy a yacht just because because it's so big, right? I'm assuming. Yeah, at least forty two feet. Yeah, so since since it's so big, like I'm. What is that? I've also been on some like two masted sailboats, and those are pretty sweet as oh, well. Yeah. yeah, but uh, like I'm pretty confident in not you know tipping over when the on, the one thing because I remember back in grade seven we went canoeing and kayaking, and mm. I surprisingly loved kayaking. Even though you're really close to the water, yeah, but but it seems like, like, like I had more control in the kayak than the canoe. What if you like? I've seen people roll it and then they're upside out. No, yeah, yeah. Then, that's like that scares. You're pretty me. much done. As long as happens. you and your <laughs> thank you, Angus. I've had that happen to me. <laughs> you're done. As long as you and you. That's the thing. Is as long as you and your your partner in the kayak are you know on the same page, then you're fine. Because you you just kind of go at a. It was the single good, ones I was talking good, about. Good, 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 uh, uh, at a good pace but yeah the the canoes were too too flimsy for me yeah they are kind of kind of rickety yeah so to pop it over to our next topic why don't you hit that link we are gonna highlight kind of a new startup um every podcast we're gonna talk about it that we think is kind of interesting all right just a, 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 be a, a side note on the the, on the bees, bees. Thing. oh yes let's go back to that you found that it says on here you might not think of dark colors such as red or black as being aggressive but... nobody thinks that <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> what murder no one thinks of black as aggressive but when it comes to bees and wasps it's true darker colors will sometimes be interpreted as natural predators such as beards and skunks and I think it goes on to say pretty much when bees see the color like black, they think stink first, ask questions. All right. Like, uh, stink, I've got stink. a problem. Like they say red or black. What predator is red? What animal is red? Fire, oh. fire is red. Maybe. I don't know. Be, well, they don't go and sting the they don't fire. Like fire. Do but I'm thinking blood. There's nah. definitely some like PTSD <clears throat> with with blood, with blood for bees. <laughs> Think about it though. But bees, going? once they sting, they die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how could they have PTSD? Well, yeah. it would be instinctual. Like the black makes sense. Black bears, mm-hmm. uh, badgers, skunks make sense to me. Yeah, but yeah. red, that doesn't really uh, compute with communists. Me. Yeah. Very. <laughs> <laughs> Angry North American bees over here. They don't like <laughs> the camis. Oh my goodness. All right, let's go over to this. Oh, and the middle, it's the middle link with the green. Yes. All right, so we got an article on here. So this article is Ozobot. Mm -hmm. Ozobot. 3000. uh, Angus, could you just only speak in that voice for the rest of the podcast? It would (laughs) genuinely just make my week. (laughs) It's uh, you can play uh, the video if you want. And uh, just keep the volume down. But basically, what we're looking at is this guy who developed this this kind of t- these toys. And what they do is basically they help kids learn uh, coding and programming, which a lot of people are trying to do these days, considering it's becoming one of the largest skill assets um, to yeah. have. And so how it kind of works. <clears throat> 
is you basically start off with basic color markers on a piece of paper Mm -hmm. and they can just draw whatever they want and this bot it seems uh, reacts to it and it knows that if there's a, a red strip a green and then another green that it needs to turn a certain direction and you can give these directional codes uh, with this program uh, with these little robots and then once you make him travel over this line he'll read the colors that you've drawn and uh, he'll do the commands it's kind of like a beeper bot all right so the robot kind of looks like r2d2 slash like my vacuum cleaner <laughs> like the and Roomba. So, and it's got it's got yeah the Roomba and it's Roomba. got the wheels on the bottom i don't own a Roomba, by the way i do yeah, i got I like one. four that's <laughs> too many <laughs> i hate them just put the cat on them have you seen that cat shark one <laughs> <The Roomba? laughs> oh, but it's on wheels and it's driving over the marker and it follows the marker like you draw your marker around the paper and it just follows it around and it reads the colors that it's driving over top of. That's actually pretty crazy. And I think the reason why he decided to start this is because not only do people want to teach their kids programming because it's, again, a huge asset to have in today's world is that they're trying to get their kids less screen time. You know, kids are... Um, glued to iPads and whatever. So the whole draw with this is it, it teaches them coding um, with not having to just be glued to a screen the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to see the video that we're watching that kind of explains it, it's called Ozobot. That's O Z O Z Z O Z. It's a Canadian podcast. O Z O. There we go. B O T teaches kids coding basics so if you look that up on youtube you can see the video we're kind of looking at right now does it say what what languages it's uh you know it's like it it's speaks powered by colors um, hopefully programming yeah, i wonder la- la- languages the starter kit is. costs 60 dollars, which is pretty affordable yeah they've raised over three million dollars that's pretty it's all a lot of bots yeah um i was definitely <laughs> i think we were talking about this in uh computer science lounge over at the you know, at the university about whether or not you know first year programming or at least compute 174 <clears throat> which is kind of introduction to programming i don't really know how i feel about compute 101 i thought that was a little bit basic but yeah i think definitely 174 just in terms of python well, Compute 174, by the way, is just our first, uh, our introduction to computing over at the University of Alberta here. And I think, I mean, I'm saying that because I'm a computer science kid, but I'm pretty mad that I have to take math courses, even though, you know, they're required. So it might not, maybe not every faculty thinks that that way. But from my point of view, I think definitely doing first year Python, for example, gives you just at least a basic understanding of of programming. And there are many friends I know who did it and then ended up transferring to computer science from their programs. Yeah, because I feel what you're saying is absolutely correct. And I took 101 co-currently mm-hmm. with 174. And 101 was definitely not very representative <laughs> of like what actually what goes is, on. Yeah. And I just crushed that course because I was doing 174 at the same time. And mm-hmm. I was like, that is like child's play compared <laughs> to like 174 is actually using a language. I think with that Ozobot, when I saw a picture of the, the screen mm-hmm. when the robot's plugged into the computer, there's set commands. And I think underneath like the turn left, you just manipulate the color command that left command responds to oh, okay. and correlates. So there's no actual syntax language in there. All right. So this is this is the Startups Podcast. This is the first time we're going through one of these articles. So we, we're going to talk about how we feel about this, right? Mm-hmm. I would suppose so. I've got, a, I've got a hot take here. Okay. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't, see, I don't see people using this for more than, and I see this as a 21-year-old who is not <laughs> in the target demographic and who skimmed the article below for about 15 seconds. I see kids getting super bored of this, like that. Like It's true. Like you just draw with markers and it drives around, but like, are you yeah. learning anything from that? And uh, is that it? <laughs> I feel like that is the equivalent to compute 101 for introductory <laughs> uh, kids programming toys and 
I, I think you're kind of right. I think kids could, unless they're super young, they could get really easily bored of this mm-hmm. real, real quick. Um, I mean, it's good if you want to reduce their screen time, but I definitely am going to teach my kids how to program and code. What if if every time you got it to to do the uh, every time you got it to do the right command, it yelled out "World Star." I think. I think that would more benefit me <laughs> than any children. Yeah, yet. that's true. <laughs> Every time you said green, red, green, and you turned around pro- properly. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> or the parent gives their child a nice reward for doing a certain set like, of commands. Like what? What kind of rewards? Well, <clears throat> I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, <laughs> Defend your point. Ice cream or something, you know, food. Now, would the ice cream not Trip negate the, the like healthiness of choosing to do a robot instead of a... <laughs> yeah, that's true. What if we you don't pull any punches soundboards there? and play like different movie character soundboards to the robot? All right, now I think we got our own idea going here. <laughs> Screw that. Like, let's, let's roll with this. To be fair, to we don't want, you know, in the next 20 years, just a bunch of computer science kids. Because first of all, that will be hard for classes to get into. And secondly, you know... Less jobs if all for the us. people that were supposed to be doctors become computer scientists. I was someone who's going to the show, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think everyone needs some sort of grasp of computing. Then yeah, the knowledge. You can't definitely. you can't um You guys use it way too much for you not to like wonder what, how your internet works. Well that's the thing, because I like to know how things work. Mm-hmm. I take apart my computer, like I like to tinker, mm-hmm. and this is just like another level of that in the software level, like how do websites work? Like how does this how does all Facebook work? Like that that would get everyone going if they saw a little thing that says, Oh god, I'm pretty sure Facebook the source works. code for Facebook would just <laughs> blow your goddamn mind. <laughs> Well, yeah, the I think there's database behind the scenes. Oh SQL, God! All that crap. All the queries. Yeah, maybe not that deep. Like I said, the Twitter, basic concept the of you know assigning you know two to X and then saying X does this, and yeah. the way they structured one seven four was they made you do some something like you know go through a list and you had to do it manually with a bunch of if statements like five of them. Yeah, and then at the middle of the course, they taught you for loops and while loops, and then you realize this is way easier. Yeah, and in kind of them walk, walking you through, hey, do do this now. It'll teach you an easier way to do it, which is annoying at the moment, but I think that concept when you go on to any field, I feel like that's a good, that's a good, uh, a good le- lesson that's pretty applicable to. To yeah. any field is the concept of you. They know, gotta give you the tools. You gotta first. do the mistakes first. To yeah, learn why and how to to functions. make you know the computer work for you, even if it's with you know being being a doctor or nurse with databases and patients and all that. Yeah, craziness. I think there's just so much like technology around us. It's crazy. We're not like n- more people aren't like wondering about this sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean, like your car gets software updates and stuff now. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And your like headphones get updates. And that is scary. The you can, uh, you can plug your laptop thing. in your car mm-hmm. and you can change its settings in the program. So it, r- it can run on ethanol. What? Very, very easily. Really? Yeah. And it just things like 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 you made a really good point. I don't understand when people say, "Hey, um, why?" Uh, like I don't get computers. Like <laughs> I don't know. I just use it. Whatever. Like you're not you, you're not curious at all. Like what goes on? Like when you drive a car, you have to know a little bit of how the it works, works yeah. how it functions. Shouldn't the same be with your phone and with your laptop, yeah. with your TV, with your internet? Like. Yeah. The more knowledgeable you are about, you know, things you use, then the more, um, I guess, oh, independent, but you kind of, you be more self-reliant. Yeah. Self-aware too, I think. Yeah. yeah. That you're that aware definitely. of like what you're like consuming basically, like mm-hmm. all this technology in your face and you know what's actually out there. Is and nice. I'll say, I mean, you know, just to, to, to kind of wrap her up with uh with 
this is obviously this can be said a, about any other field too so number one being you know definitely more people more younger kids should be encouraged to go t towards that just because of our bias first and foremost and mm -hmm. uh and because the world is heading towards that direction and secondly not saying everyone should be computer science people and not everyone's gonna have the knowledge of that but it is definitely going to be something that enough of us are going to have to know so that people who are doing other just as important jobs and probably a lot more important jobs than us little guys all over here are able to, to rely on us for that kind kind of uh for that kind of insight and uh and information so to pull it back to our first topic for a sec if you have a first entrepreneurial experience why don't you send us an email and tell us about it at the pod the startups podcast at gmail.com that's a uh, plural startups startups singular on podcast yeah and why don't we go to our next link here this is a five lessons learned from my million dollar startup and this comes from i want to get his name right george arison a R I S O N. Who made Taxi Magic, now known as Curb, which was Uber way before Uber and Lyft. And how he kind of talks about his experience having that come up before even the internet was like a huge thing. Mm -hmm. And he kind of pinpoints five things that I think you should ask yourself um, before you embark on a startup. So if you just want to. Take a full, I think it was take a full stack approach or you keep going down here. Oh, no, no. Is that the first one? I think that's the first uh, point. Uh, uh, possibly. He says take a full stack approach. So he's trying to get a good overview of like, do you have complete control over the customer experience um it's like it's like apple they make the laptops and the phones but they also make the software on it right yes They're in control of all of that everything all the parts and qualities that come into your product or your service you're in control of and that's that's probably some good advice i mean the more involved you are you can control at every level the outcome and Absolutely. it's not like you're getting something shipped from another country mm -hmm. and it's crap and then it's you know all your products are breaking because of it so i feel like that's a good take a full stack approach is what he calls it it's like a good way to start a monopoly basically yeah full stack of money full stack of properties you can't <laughs> lose right <laughs> no, you can't Next His up. second one, always test and learn. So this one's kind of interesting. <clears throat> so according to investors, the number one mistake startup founders make is not being flexible. Don't be married to an idea, no matter how great it may seem. Instead, test and learn. For example, you might be convinced something is important to a customer, only to find out later that it isn't. So instead of investing valuable time, energy, and money into something you simply think is necessary, test it out first. Let data and customer feedback drive your choices, not your gut. That's a good idea. Example of that in real life. Okay. Uh, I thought you were going to go to the Herbert Simon about intuition. Versus... Oh, God, no. Okay. That's... no. We're not going down that road. I don't want to. I don't want to go that far. <laughs> I feel like you could apply that to most of what Facebook does. Another hot take, guys. Like they're they're adding sound to their videos now. Like the videos already autoplay. Yes. But when you're scrolling through, I guess we're kind of dating ourselves here. But the sound, as of right now, this is a new thing. The sound just plays out loud. And really? I don't know anybody who would be in favor of that. No, I no, don't it's almost wanna hear that. It's just for advertisement, I think. Yeah, like they do it because they can. I guess they're big enough that they can just do that, <laughs> and that's that's. They totally can take fine. away the headphone jack. And, and <laughs> yeah, and wireless, any. and oh, you need Actually, an adapter for this and that, and all our phones right uh, run off this new sixty-four people, Lightning. People like, still get it though, and I like the idea of. And they I mean, rock it too. Come to think of it, the whole I was I saw this this picture today about when it was that. 
all these different phones, you know, Nokia's, Ericsson's, all those old school phones, Sony has had their different uh, charging ports. And when they said, you know, let's make everything be able to be charged on USB, which, you know, most people just refer to now as the Android charger, as opposed to the lightning thing. And I, I, I can appreciate what Apple is trying to do with their everything one port thing, but it's, it's, but then it, you gotta, yeah, you gotta buy a hundred dollar adapter to put. One, what do you mean one port? On those new micro uh, MacBook Airs, they have like one Everything lightning port, and like if just... you need a USB, you have to buy an extension that are like a hundred dollars just to plug into that lightning port to give you another HDMI port, another USB. Mm-hmm. So why do you ridiculous. say you appreciate what they're doing? Well, like because uh, back then when they were, um, like if you look at all Android phones, they charge with the same cable, mm-hmm. right? It's the same plug in. Once you have one Android phone charger. You can charge any Android and phone. And your Beats and your, you know. Yeah, it's all very else. convenient. It's just yeah. very painful as you switch over into yes. that, right? And with Apple, the difference with them is instead of, it's not like everyone is switching to the Apple chargers. Is they're making it very, I think uh, Peter got the new uh, Beats. I have some fancy wireless Beats for my well, iPhone 7. What are they called? They're called Beats X. And you charge them with the... With the lightning cable. Yeah, with lightning yeah, cable. Oh, shit. So what I'm saying is it's the same idea, except they're kind of trying to... It is more constricted to just Apple, and I can appreciate the it, how how easy it is if you are fully invested in, in Apple. But it iTunes is It's fully not the same. You have to buy it. Trade. It doesn't come with all the products. Sorry? Does it not like you have to buy the adapter? It doesn't come with all the products. No, no, no. The I'm saying the like if you want to go from the lightning port to a different adapter, yes, you have to charge it. But I'm saying if all you use is everything that's lightning port, it is very convenient for you. You just have this one. You just have this one thing thing. that charges both your phone and your 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 earphones, your everything. So in that sense, I can appreciate the. But also, then I mean, on another note, look at, like, look at their laptops. Like, how much functionality do they really have anymore? Like one, a couple USBs. Some of them don't even have HDMI. I mean, they're sacrificing functionality for what slimness. I mean, it's Design. well. They're hoping that everybody else, I think, is going to catch on and also only use that one type of port and skip it because HDMI cables—they're big, they're bulky. Yeah. Um, and those other ones are way faster and way smaller. So Ultimately, they're... it is like Peter said, faster, and it's the same thing with you know the VGA to HDMI switch. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if if, if Windows computers started by adding on. That input, and then gradually phase what out. What input? The the uh the uh. Is it Thunderbolt? Is it Firewall? I can't it's remember fire. the name. Firebolt. The it's same way. The, some sort of nature thing. Oh, the, the lightning. I well, I don't know because my new laptop realize. it's it's MSI and it has a lightning. Bolt yeah. So so you know we gradually phased out the uh the VGA gradually phased out the. The CD port, which was big, everyone was like, "How would you download anything? Mm. You need you need a CD." Internet now, yeah. But you know, there's internet. So I, like I said, I think they're very much ahead of their time, and that's why I kind of have an appreciation for. I'm just not down with spending extra money when I'm already going to be paying thousands of dollars for a laptop that doesn't even have that much memory space mm-hmm. or power. And I mean, it's, but you can hold it with your pinky, basically. That's yeah, about the I don't thing care. I want it to work and hold and do its job, what it's supposed to do. It's comfortable. It's not a fashion statement, and that's what they've turned it into. It's a bloody laptop. It's a computer. It's supposed to be functional. And I would say again, with the functionality, then it depends pure purely on what you're using it for. If you're yeah. gaming, probably Fucking shouldn't shit. get a MacBook. <laughs> It's awful. Right? But if you're working on music pro production, and obviously, you know, there'll always be Windows computers that are just on steroids and uh, in, in comparison and price. But one of the reasons why I have... Well, Windows don't really... Well, do they own... 
what computer? Because they don't really make. There's no Windows computers yeah, besides yeah. the Surface. It's kind of like I'm, um, you know, um, PC. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm lumping all of them. PC Master Race. All the absolutely. <laughs> all the uh, PCs and them. But for example, with this MacBook, yes, I'm sacrificing uh, space for sure because pretty much every PC comes You're with at least more. That's what I don't one, understand. One terabyte now, but. It runs and it's pretty powerful for all my meals. It thins and it's small. It's convenient and comfortable for you. Where I wouldn't want the same thing on Windows for let let's say a uh, you know a a bigger or bulkier lap, laptop because you could, I prefer the the slickness. Yeah, but PC now has slick. Slim. I mean, look at some of the, the Dell um, XPS 15 or the or Asus Zen books. They're just as slim. And the Chrome. And they and the have all these PC functionalities, Windows, and you're going to pay probably two thirds of the price. Some are pretty expensive, though. They well, get up there. They but then also, get, the power will be probably better. Pretty, yeah. Pretty, uh, uh, yeah, they definitely get pretty expensive. I'm um, just I'm saying, I could there. be completely wrong on this because mm-hmm. I hate Apple with a passion. <laughs> But I'm saying is if you took a laptop, same size, dimensions, power, all the same specs as mm-hmm. that that was non Apple, yeah. something tells me it's gonna cost less. Something also tells me if you built it yourself, it's even gonna cost if less. If you build it yourself, and we're talking PCs and desktops now. Desktops. Not, not, not Let's go desktops. Yes. Yeah. But the MacBook actually, and this is something again I had to look into when I was buying in your lap, laptop mm-hmm. the macbook pro 13 inch ranks up pretty high on the computers that you know that you're advised to get for let's say computer science and music production ranks high it ranks up pretty i'll put up right now i on, believe it yeah on piece of world because i think the general misconception is if you get a a macbook you're like you know you're just if you're pretty much in the same ca- category as people getting co- coffee, the sick, specifically from Star Starbucks, as opposed to to you know any other coffee place, they're like the retarded cousin of the PC. <laughs> the I would, well, thank yeah, you. Though MacBook like is the retarded not. Cousin. They don't know all right, if it's, it's not in the same. They're in their fam- own Linux family. If though. it's just an Apple PC debate, I'm just gonna say. I just like the operating system better. Like you're a hundred percent right, Brandon, in every single like it's the more expensive, it's nicer. worse in hardware, but <clears throat> mm-hmm. the operating system is a thousand it's times older, nicer. I think maybe, is it not? Like Linux has been around for a while. I guess, but they, they kinda spun off and did their own. They went their own yeah. little And branch. it's like more efficient too, so you may have worse specs, but it's still running a lot closer. Yeah, I will like, say yeah. like how many Crashing times was. does your computer <laughs> I don't know? Was uh, misbehaved. C definitely freaked out at his computer a couple of times, but with the whole Windows up update and the randomness, of yeah, this the automatic thing, like there are just so updates, many things so. that are okay. Personally, for me, anyway, I got a MacBook because ma- mainly because of music. music. Not that there are other sauce, so not that there they aren't other softwares out there, but I prefer Logic Pro X. Right, and then next up was just because of how slick it was for how much power I could get out of it and battery power too mm-hmm. because it definitely lasts a long a long time and third but not l- l- least thirdly it was definitely the issue of uh, of just I ma- message and I already had a- an iPhone do you purchase Apple able Music to, uh, to sync it and yeah I have, I mean Apple Music is available now he never on, left the website on basically. Android he just stayed on the iTunes <laughs> website and just got it yeah there. and I mean like you know, Android. I was using Apple Music on Android already oh. before ma- ma- uh, making the switch. Oh, it, it took them dedicated. a couple. Yeah, I mean, it took them a couple, a couple months to to make it available for Android. The whole title and stuff is is topic for a, a day, friend day. But I'll say, yeah, my main reasons will be the functionality, how small it is, and you know, the exclusiveness of I ma- messages. I will say I do not have a problem with the OS. I think it's fine. Mm. People like it. I personally don't, but that's me. But I don't Mm. think it's bad in any shape or form. I think how they function is perfectly okay. The only problem I have with Apple is just their business model. That's my only only, uh, quarrel that I have with them. 
but other than that, their their products are innovative. They seem to work fairly well. I mean, uh, you don't have any uh, iPhone seven uh, explode burn marks on there your you go. thigh. <laughs> yeah, I, I just also don't like how they don't offer much support for old OSs. I mean, like they Windows do, they, they seven force you to update basically. Yeah, it's it's basically update or get fucked. Yeah, <laughs> basically, of, mm. and then you slowly run out of memory too because you yeah. have to keep updating, which is people don't know that. I've seen a lot of like longtime developers go on big rants uh, because of that, and that's their kind of big bugaboo with the uh... fun fact. Or actually, I guess I shouldn't say fun fact unless I have the fact ready. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure there's a, like a mini rant about Internet Explorer on if you look at oh. the. Um, I hate how they keep sliding that in. The code for the <laughs> University of Alberta uh, website. Yeah. I'm pretty sure buried in the comments somewhere. I could have sworn there was like whoever made it just like wrote an angry little like tirade <laughs> against Internet it. Internet yeah. Explorer. Yeah, I can't. I don't know where it it's is. It's funny but. because if Apple people try and use that against PC, it's like no one uses Internet Explorer on PC. Why is it still it's, there though? Why does it still come it in. with it? It comes with the old Why am I forced like revived. to get a bunch of like every single, I think the other thing too is MacBooks, Apple, the OS is just all one. But with PC, the Sony, this Dell, this HP. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't want like an HP because it heats up too much. And this other part. And it's like, I'll get this one and it just comes with a bunch of stuff I don't need. Well, it's because you're 85 years old. You just learned like <laughs> what a computer was. You open all your spam mail and you wonder why your computer's <laughs> fucking broken. You're I'm like, oh, Cheryl just sent me an email and says she wants to meet up for drinks tonight. <laughs> she sent me eight pictures. Half of them are topless. <laughs> my lucky day i like this computer <laughs> yeah so internet explorer is the first thing you use right because that's what comes on them and you're now like 90 and you're not gonna like you you're not gonna change to something else no. right? mm-hmm. you don't even so you much. can't even comprehend that there's other ways to access the yeah. internet yeah and i think one other thing too that people ignore is the fact that macbooks generally nowadays in a way come with ssd and if you get a pc with ssd it will be more expensive yeah. Most PCs people get come with hard drive and, you know. HDD. Yeah, yeah, HDD. And going into why, why SSD over HDD, that's a discussion for a fun and day. But if you do want a PC with the same functionality with SSD, and it'll probably be low storage because one terabyte SSD costs a whole lot of money. Yeah. Also, for people who don't understand what SSD and HDD are, SSD is solid state drive. <clears throat> it's basically your long term memory for your computer, where it stores all your files, your operating system, all that. Um, it is kind of the new it's electronic uh, electronic version of HDD, which is the classic actual small physical disk hard drive in your computer. So those are just the differences. The sound too, you can hear the whining of the hard disk compared to solid state. Yeah, SSD is... If you have a shitty computer, yeah. SSD is my hard true. drive. You can hear it. Um so to go on to you had a nice uh you had a nice article, but I think we might have to skip over that because yeah. we're coming to yeah, our time, time up here. Next episode, Angus sauce. Next episode, though. Yeah, you bring so that up. Send us an email. We got overwhelmed with emails last time. We would love oh to Absolutely. hear more. I love reading those. And we'll oh, yeah. probably read some on some our, maybe too. not our next episode because I think our next episode we're going to have a special guest on. Yes. And we're going to be doing an interview so you guys will... Get to see a different <clears throat> a different structure there. Mm-hmm. So we'll be trying to interview some young entrepreneurs and talk about their experiences yes. and what's going on with their companies so you guys can get a look into them. By so, the way, my uh, favorite PC laptop that I've seen around has to be the Dell XPS. Yeah. I think it looks slick. slick with and the no, pretty uh, nice. what's it called? Buffer? Like yeah. Around the edge. Exactly, around the edge of the screen. Yeah. Screen. Just it's like uh, zero. To yeah, plug everything to end episode two in the books now, you'll be able to watch this on YouTube. Uh, uh, we the Startups Podcast on YouTube. It'll mm-hmm. be on there. Should be on Facebook. there by Facebook as well. We'll make a post. Like us on Facebook if you haven't already. Absolutely. And also um, through our post there, you'll be able to see when the um, episodes go live. Yes uh soundcloud soundcloud is also available and uh for apple 
on the iTunes uh, podcast. We are the more episodes we get out there, the more the easier it'll be to find us. But for right now, you can yeah. just look up the episode names, and yes. uh, and it should so the startup podcast and then the episode name, and it should take you straight to to the uh, to the podcast. And of course, if they're listening to this, they know this episode's name exactly. <laughs> exactly. They've already found it. Exactly. They got it. Also, we're on podcast.com as well Mm -hmm. it's the same file if you download it from there we're everywhere everywhere we are everywhere (laughs) we're coming to (laughs) like walmart's near you we gotta (laughs) deal with zellers can we just like get sponsored by keep count next episode of how many fake promises peter makes to the audience (laughs) all right anyways email us in with who has the best idea about who's rich and that person gets to taser someone else on the hundredth episode oh my god set in stone i'm done i'm legally binding yeah it's good the winner gets to taser someone the winner and if you're listening to this there's like one other person who's going to email it like whoever you email is going to win I'm Peter, by the way, in case we haven't introduced our names. Tolu, oh. tell us what we're listening to today for our outro. All right, so today we're going to be listening to my boy Chashe. Mm. Is this uh, a new one? Uh, it's one of his, uh, his, his first songs actually released later last year, just a couple of months ago. But just to kind of drive some traffic that way, his uh, name on SoundCloud is Avant Chase, A-V-A-N-T, and Chase. And he is, you know, a fellow member of the Ebb and Flow group. So, so this song's not on Ebb and Flow. It's not on Ebb and Flow. It's on but, his, but it's on his, and all the the uh, link will be yep. yeah, definitely sla- uh, slapped on there. And can I just say how excited I am to take a week off? Well, I'll still be studying, but to take a week off and yes, go off to BC and see uh, the BC fa- family and your girl <laughs> and oh, the lady. Oh. And also, you know, I'll uh, I'll definitely be talking with all the other guys, uh, the the clothing guys, and if yeah. you want to get in, you know, if they're interested with ads and whatnot, ads and these whatnot, are some yeah. top secret business plans, guys. That we're still live. <laughs> if you guys are interested in yeah, advertising if, honestly, with us or want to come do an interview, you have yes. a your own company. Um, I'm just thinking of people I know now that we can get on yeah. here. Again, hit us with that email, the startups podcast at gmail.com. At gmail.com yeah, because I mean, we're all young guy guys here. We are, after all, individual startups and ourselves. So, in any way, we can encourage P people to kind of take that leap and do something they love and will love to uh, help them get the word I'll out. I'll encourage yes. you. Absolutely. So, thank you so much for listening. Absolutely. And, uh, being with us, and we hope you, you enjoyed it. Shout out to Red Mind racing like a Tron bike I'm out of my mind These four walls can't contain me About to break heaven's fifth wall This rush of bliss Got me whole new perspective Got me in motion and active Got my tattered angels dancing And my demons fleeing Down the rabbit hole I go I'm out of my mind I'm out of my mind for walls can't contain me, but I break heaven's fifth wall. This rush of bliss got me a whole new perspective. Absolution for my sins, resolution for my woes, temporary constructs, instructing my visions, erase my missions on a quest for a dragon that I'll never catch. Down the rabbit hole I go, world so grassy, still feeling jazzy. Nobody ever told me I could die from bliss. Still on the first tip, sitting on dreams. Never say bye, so I'll stay high. Salvation, keep on going to voicemail. Are you really there? You are delusional. Two faces like yin and yang. Only lived in the light. Now I'm chilling on the dark side of the moon. All these craters deeper than what I thought. Sitting on the dark side, wondering where your fire went. The only light in the sky be the stars of our memories. How I miss the good times. 
every hit I take takes me closer to the flat line. I guess I'm just another punchline. Cuffing unbelievers in Christian. Spending Sunday mass at the brothel while chasing dragons. Will I ever reach her? A heretic among infidels. Lurk searching brimstone for my daily sinners. I guess you can call that our daily bread. I'm out of my mind. I'm out of my mind. These four walls can't contain me. But I break heaven's fifth wall. Living in bliss. Got me a whole new perspective. Got me emotion and active. Got my title angels dancing. And my demons pleading.